Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com, which is the home of online learning for the double bass. So if you want to take your playing further, you want to learn more about what we do and how we can help you on your journey, please follow the links below. Now, we're continuing on in this video with our new series where we ask questions to the world's greatest bass players. We've already asked this question to the jazz world and now we're looking at the legends of classical double bass. And the question that we've asked them is, we're all spending more time at home with our instruments. What are you practicing right now? Hi, I'm Gary Carr and I'm standing in my studio, which I use as a recording studio, in my home in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Now that we have lots of time during the COVID-19 isolation, I've had lots of time to practice and to put and to re revisit some of the old pieces that I used to play many, many years ago. And since this is Beethoven's 250th anniversary of his birth, I've been kind of focusing a lot on Beethoven. I've been playing the Romance in F, which I hope with Harmon Lewis that will be making a YouTube performance of it. And also the Horn Sonata, which on the double bass, because it's so beautifully lyrical, sounds extremely well. And in fact, it's a kind of sonata of Beethoven that I recommend that everybody play because it's much easier than the cello sonata. I refuse to pronounce that instrument properly. The cello sonatas are much more challenging, but the horn sonata lies within, mostly within this range of the double bass. And so it's very playable and wonderful music. You need a good pianist also. Um, and, but we are doing some of the cello sonatas, um, two of them in fact right now. One is the G minor, which Be Beethoven at the piano played with Dragonetti at the turn of the 8th, 19th century. And uh, what is really interesting is that Beethoven was so impressed by Dragonetti's performance of this difficult piece that at the end of the, the playing of the sonata, Beethoven jumped up from the piano and went over to Dragonetti and hugged both Dragonetti and his double bass. We're also working on the D major cello sonata Beethoven, which is more challenging, but I really wanted to do it because it has, of all the sonatas that Beethoven wrote for the cello, it has the most beautiful slow movement, which I really, really enjoy playing. In addition to that, I'm working on a few other things, uh, among them the Copland Sonata, which I perform many times. But um, many years ago, in the late 80s, I think it was, that I visited Aaron Copland at his home <clears throat> for the sole purpose of trying to convince him to write for our beautiful instrument. And he told me that he had stopped composing many years prior to the visit, and he felt really sorry for me. So he said, why don't I go find the violin sonata and perhaps you and I can work on it together and arrange, arrange it for the bass. And so he went and got the sonata and uh, we did work on it. And I'm really thrilled to say that it just fit the bass to it to the T. It fit the spirit of the piece really, really well. And, um, and in fact, I'm happy to say that Boozy and Hawks that published the original version for violin will soon be releasing the published version for double bass and piano. So keep an eye out for this wonderful uh, opportunity to play a really great piece of music from the 20th century. Um, I'm also working on another 20th century piece written at the same, around the same year as the Copland Sonata by Hindemith. A lot of players play the Hindemith Sonata and I, I was distressed to find on YouTube many of performances uh, who 
all many of the performances on the YouTube were played by musicians who justifiably followed the metronomic markings in the music. But I am convinced that those metronomic markings are wrong. They are too fast and they don't make any sense in terms of the musicality inherent in the music. And so I'd like to do a version of the Hindemith Sonata much slower so that I can really show the extent of the expressiveness of the piece. You know, years ago, I played the Kusevitsky Concerto. My teacher, Stuart Sankey, said that I was playing it way too slow. And when I recorded, I think the first recording I did of it was in Oslo. And, uh, and he said, nobody's going to like it because it's too slow. But uh, I felt that to truly realize the passion within the music, it has to be played slowly. It has to really demonstrate that Russian passion, which cannot be done at a fast speed. And so uh, I unwittingly set a new standard because all the bass players after the recording came out played it at the speed that I do uh, when I play the Kuzovitsky Concerto, which by the way, is one of my favorite solo pieces written originally for the bass. I love that more than almost any other piece because it really is the greatest exploration, exploration of the lyrical qualities of the voice of the double bass. And uh, that's the reason I really love it. I've never tired, I played the Kuzovitsky Concerto hundreds of times and I've never tired of it because it's always, it's like opera to me. It's, you know, I can sing all the way from beginning to, to the end and really communicate a message to the audience. So now I'd like to do a piece with Harmon Lewis. And this is um, our concluding piece for this interview. And um, it's a piece called Karatachi Dohana. And a Karatachi is a kind of um, thorny fruit tree, but it has beautiful flowers. And Hana means flower in Japanese. And this is an art song that is, to me, one of the most hauntingly beautiful hypnotic songs that I've ever played and I hope you enjoy it.
and gentlemen and all bass players and all uh, music lovers. Uh, I hope you are well, very well after all this uh, critical and difficult time with this pandemic and uh, I hope you are safe and you have uh, recovering uh, progressively some concerts. Personally I lost a uh, uh, couple of months of concerts and um, well, and it's a dark day uh, today in Paris, cloudy day, so this is why I played uh, little notes of uh, Django Reinhardt, uh, Peace Nuage. And now uh, we have a program, we have five questions program. Uh, let me see, many of us are currently spending more time at home with our instrument. What are you practicing right now? Well. To be honest, uh, it was not really uh, our time for practicing because um, I take the advantage of this moment. I have the chance to have a, a house and I have a lot of works pending in my house for many years. So I have been uh, going, doing some uh, works and some uh, painting but also some music and uh, right now what I'm practicing is essentially some um, new pieces. Uh, one, uh, it's a project so I can I practice and extend day uh, per day uh, some new ideas until I have the complete piece. But for now I am practicing a piece dedicated to the, the Spanish composer Manuel de Falla. I am experimenting some new ideas with the same technique, by the way, 7-bit uh, melody. and also some bits uh, but I will show you maybe later uh, so these are mainly the, the, the pieces I am uh, working on at the moment solo pieces but I have also uh, with my new program and it's a string octet I have some pieces to, to practice also because I have a recording uh, next um, next September so quite soon now. There is a double bass event online hosted and organized by Barry Green and Jason Heath from the United States. The event is called International Online Bass Summit and I have been invited to give a performance presentation for this event. Currently I am in China and my performance is scheduled to happen on June 24th at 3.30 in the afternoon, U.S. 
East Coast time, which is June twenty fifth, three thirty in the morning where I am. In order to not make my neighbors angry, I have to make videos in advance instead of playing live. So I have been making a few new videos. I just finished making a video of the first movement of the Dittersdorf Concerto, and since there is no piano or orchestra around me, and I happen to have a cello here, so I made an arrangement uh, of a eight-voice cello ensemble to accompany the solo part, uh, and I played uh, every cello part in this video. I just started uh, working on the next video, which is an arrangement of a theme song from a Chinese animation movie called、uh, "Big Fish and Begonia." It's a beautiful film.、Uh, it's uh, uh, in a similar style as the Japanese animation director Miyazaki, who is famous for his works such as "Spirited Away," "Totoro." And Castle in the Sky, and the music in the Chinese movie is very much like the ones composed by Joe Hisaishi, who did the soundtrack for almost all of Miyazaki's films. And I made the arrangement、uh, for double bass and cello duet, and I will be playing both parts as well.、Uh, I have also been practicing. Uh, orchestra excerpts and box suites, and I think I will always practice them regardless of the situation. Hi guys,、uh, I am Francois Rabat, and I am、uh, doing this to participate also for we like everyone.、Uh, I am practicing now. Always I practice at home Bach and the scales. Bach and Robert. Bach. This all the suite. Every day I play suite complete every day, and、uh, it's six suite. You have it six six a day, and after I stop practicing on Sunday, like the seventh day, I don't practice. Hi everybody. I am Bojo Parajic, and I'm very happy to be part of this project by this cover double bass. So right now, in these days, albeit we had a quarantine, I don't think I've been practicing very differently than usual. I've spent most of my time by trying to make a nice arrangements of some beautiful pieces for a double bass solo. That、uh, I sometimes even manage to figure out some nice ones that nobody played before, and otherwise I've been practicing a program recital program that I will perform in Ljubljana on August twelfth, which is my only concert that hasn't been cancelled or not cancelled yet due to this. Awful pandemic and、uh, health crisis worldwide, and I will play there one of Marvel's Brahms sonatas, which I am very happy about. I would like now to promote, I think, in the next months, whenever I can, my most beautiful project I think I have ever fulfilled. It's、uh, Double Bass Goes Brahms Super Audio CD. And I will indeed manage to play, like I usually always do, at least one piece that I have never had performed before in a concert. And、uh, that is usually what I always do. I try to get just forward with learning new recital programs and new pieces instead of repeating ones I've played. Before, so let's hope it will go fine. So, what have I been doing during isolation? Glad you asked. Been getting a lot of stuff done, 
that I would like to say it was on the back burner, but it, it, it wasn't even on the back burner, just projects I've started and <clears throat> didn't get around to. So I've been I've, um, doing fine, uh, getting my editions of different transcriptions I've made, the garden scene, the Ala Mendelssohn, the Mon Cello Concerto, um, all of this stuff ready, as well as I've been working on a huge stack of orchestral repertoire with uh, putting in some bowings and fingerings, if you should want to play any of that stuff in fifths. As well, this book, the Canadian School of Double Bass Intervals Chord Study Arpeggio Scales. Um, in this book, uh, which features all keys, minor, major, uh, it has all the intervals, thirds, fifths, I forgot fourths, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, octaves, with um, there's a there's a method to the fingering. Uh, there's a chord study and arpeggios. It's got uh, four different st styles of fingering um, for a major uh, major and minor scales, like a like a traditional based one, uh, one that's sort of binary action. Um, a pivot, one that has as many notes in the hand as possible, and then sort of a combo of those. Um, and uh, chromatic scales. Um, so really everything you need right there. And, and for real practicing, what I've been doing is, of course, like everyone else, unaccompanied Bach. I've been practicing, uh, well, really all of them. I do want to record all of them. Uh, I started that with that box six suite at my local church um, two years ago. I want to continue that at the end of the summer. Um, so uh, the reason I want to do that is that I really want to present what the bass in fifths brings to those, which it's it's a lot of resonance is what it is. I probably won't be uh, be playing them at pitch. Um, just it's it's nice to get all the resonance of the stuff of. Thank you. 
dear colleagues, I am very happy and thankful to be a part of this wonderful project. It's an honor for me. At the beginning, when the virus started to spread out, I did put my base for a while into the quarantine. <laughs> So I enjoyed the small sabbatical time without the music and I had finally time to read more books, visit the nature, etc. Afterwards I started to practice Sperger concertos, two of them which I have to record very soon with the orchestra. And besides of this I am trying to arrange some pieces for bass like the Tchaikovsky's Nutknacker sweet. The COVID-19 time is for me also a time for reflection, of course personally, but also professionally. So um, in the 1st of March we started with our semester in Salzburg University and in the second week university was closed and we started to uh, do the online teaching. So this took a lot of time to, to find really senseful together and uh, we found a really good way to it, do it online and uh, also sending some videos. So I chose the time to reflect also sometimes uh, together uh, with my students. For example, um, so in Germany a lot of people play um, one edition from the Dittersdorf Concerto, this so Of course you can play different bowings and of course you can play um, another edition. We have since more than 10 years a uh, more Urtext edition. And I was looking at this and changed some things and finally I decided to use more the, the old text edition. Or to reflect also with, with my students with more time. Do we want to start the Apeggione Sonata with one bow or we want to change bow? <laughs> So I took more time myself to reflect about a uh, kind of interpretation and I took this time also together with my students. So somehow I, I, I thought more than before, of course, because um, uh, the concerts and master classes uh, were cancelled. So I had really time to teach and I think we used this time. Um, yeah. The Mishek Sonata, I had fun to, to, to practice this Mishek Sonata number two, I really like this. That's... <laughs> cultivate, of course, your technique. So in the Mishak Sonata you have a lot of shifts to train. In the Dittersdorf you have to um, do a lot of string change because now we are not playing the Viennese tuning when we play for an audition. So that's, that's very uh, different. And uh, I must say I, I never uh, played myself the, the Francais concerto, which is, which is really a fantastic piece, like this, maybe you know this. Yeah, so that's really nice and humoristic. Uh, so I, I was really busy to, to um, change some fingerings, so to, to uh, jump a bit more in, in different pieces because I needed it for the for the teaching. Yeah, this was interesting for me. So there was no romantic idea. Oh no, I practice and yeah. In the same time, um, I, I finished a CD. 
it's called the space base. It's with uh, with uh, with a lot of techniques. It's together with the DJ. So uh, there was just a few bars missing. I recorded this bars here at home, and we always met in in the cloud to finish this CD. So there were several things to work and. Um, because my family and all uh, my friends, um, they are quite okay. So I, I must say, um, this time is not only bad. So, but of course we cannot reflect now for two years. <laughs> also to number one. Uh, I finished um, my transcription for Manuel de Falla's piece with Populaire Espanol. I really love this piece. And um, yeah, I started before to, uh, with, the, with the transcription and uh, now I finished it and I'm, I'm very happy to have this in my repertoire. It's a very nice piece to, to start a recital. Yeah? <laughs> So it's very good starter after um, warming up with some techniques um, to feel the bow, not only here, not only there, but also very on top. The first thing to say is that this pandemic lockdown has actually been a blessing. I haven't spent this amount of time at home for over 30 years. So I've been working on four projects in particular. The first being Draganetti, with whom I've had a long obsession. I've been learning and memorizing properly the 12 waltzes for unaccompanied double bass at the same time as preparing an edition. And the second project also is for unaccompanied double bass, and this is music by Pedro Valls. And nobody, I think, will even know that this piece exists. It's a humoresque for solo double bass, and I've had this manuscript in my possession for some time. I've always meant to get around to it, but now really is the first opportunity I've had. Again, I'm going to prepare an edition of this, and I'm going to perform it very soon. So uh, the humoresque will be heard for the first time since Pedro Valls himself played it. The third project relates to a CD recording of mine which will be released very soon. 
uh, it's called the South African Double Bass, and it's music written specially for me by South African composers, nine pieces. But I have to play quite soon, at the 24th of June, a recital for the African Music Concert Series, and I will play some of this music for that concert. And the final project I've been working on is for a recital that I have in September, and I hope that it goes ahead. But it's of three sonatas. The Sonata K304 by Mozart, the Violin Sonata, and that's my own transcription also. And then the Beethoven Opus 17 Horn Sonata, again my transcription. And that program I finish with Schubert's Arpeggione Sonata. But for the Arpeggione I use music given to me by my second bass teacher, Max Runger. Max passed away many years ago, but I'm sure he'd be delighted to know that I'm using his music. Hello, my name is Edixon Ruiz. I play the double bass and originally I come from Venezuela and I'm very honored to have been invited to join the interviews round of double bassists around the world and to answer the first questions about what I'm doing right now at this time and what I'm working right now. Well, um, <laughs> to be honest, I haven't been working much. Uh, our orchestra has stopped playing in large format and uh, we have been actually having an endless holidays and I uh, just became father of a sweet boy six months ago and uh, we just committed to raise him and to to be there and, and uh, help him and play with him and actually I was dreaming about to have so much free time uh, with doing nothing <laughs> uh, since so many years and it seems like the heaven had heard my praise <laughs> so I'm really excited of not having any concert and not having any tour and not having to rush from one city to the next and not having to learn a new program uh, for my next recital and it's great and I, before that I was of course uh, before the, the pandemic broke I was also committed to been a father since December that Maxim was born. Um, before that I was working on Bach and uh, even managed to record it before he was born, just in case. <laughs> and uh, I have took, uh, I have taken the bass just to kind of try to keep in decent shape and I've been working on Bach suite number four and Bach suite number five but as I said it's just very burly and I'm, of course I'm not in shape now and I would love to play for you guys <laughs> but I'm completely out of shape and uh, I don't think you will be happier about it <laughs> So, um, yeah, Bach 4 and Bach 5 had been my latest matters. And uh, there is so much work to do on them. Bach keep us fresh and always wondering. Um, it is uh, quite sad to see cellists nowadays still playing the fifth suite in normal tuning instead of using and following the master's advice to have two G strings mm, and it's also sad to see cellists nowadays playing the sixth suite uh, and the normal cello instead of a five string cello like the master himself uh, concept, concept, concept the, the, the work the master work and um, yeah, I think music is suffering a lot from from these huge egos 
around in the classical music world that they're just uh, taking the, the masterpieces like dresses and not to make them justice and to wonder from the point that the composer was actually consumed them um, therefore it has all suffered so much and they have been modified also by editors so strongly um, rhythm notes slurs and um, that's why uh, our modern playing has also covered with so much dust and stones uh, above all uh, mainly stones all this great period music it's also frightening to see um, how uh, great players of, of violin, cello, uh, viola, I mean double bass to really deny the period music of the 18th century calling it stupid or calling it uh, pointless or even shitty music actually for interpreting the 18th century and 17th century music you need to forget all you know and be selfless and um, yeah even that if you study with someone that uh, has uh, digested this philosophy the mentality and has investigated and has explore all the the historical books like Emmanuel Philk Emmanuel Bach and uh, Gimignani and it's not enough because we will never know what they did actually at that time and how good it was or how bad it was but uh, just to assume from your little knowledge that uh, this is bad or this is good and not even trying and not even paying the price you know to as I say, to, to do it in the way they were meant to be with the right scoratura, like for cellist, the, the Bach suites, and for viola, uh, the, the Sinfonia Concertante scoratura by Mozart, with every string being tuned up a half tone. I have heard uh, the greatest violists of the planet just saying that it's, that it's pointless. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's just a uh, it's, it's only the confirmation and the proof that they are deaf. Like, not like Beethoven, unfortunately, <laughs> but, but, but um, to say so, because actually in these tunings, the instruments, they resonate uh, immensely more. And uh, they finally, they, they, they start to speak. It's not about playing, they tell a story. And uh, that's a big lake, lack of, of nowadays uh, music making, that it's all about notes. And the music is so much about um, speaking and history telling, and music is so much about life. That's what I have. I learned, uh, especially in these pandemic times, doing nothing, that life no, is not about music. It's the other way around. Music is about life. So um, there is so much work to do uh, on all the instruments, uh, especially string instruments, to, you know, to, to have like different switches. Okay, now I'm playing 18th century music, I just can't play it in my, no my normal pace. And, uh, and also, the way they used to stroke, um, you can read it in the Gimignani books, it was just as it comes. And the best players, you could always tell by the right hand, because they were virtuosos on the right hand. And, they could do anything on the hand, the right hand. And on all these modern editions, you find and all the greatest slurs of music history completely split. 
and uh, which is worse uh, in, in, in orchestra music, the, especially um, when the bow is so short. Uh, the, the biggest temptation is to split slurs, and I love to split slurs actually, when, when I have proof that I can play them. <laughs> so there you go, and yeah. Hi guys, it's Lohan Campe. Um, I'm really happy to, to be virtually with all of you and I'm really grateful to discover double bass to, to create this opportunity to, to, you know, to link people and um, yeah, I think double bass world is a really big family and, um, and that's a, we are lucky to have this way to share together. Um, for this question, um, during this time a bit weird without concert, or, um, I, I personally I enjoyed this time to, to practice on think, musical things uh, that I love, like um, discover new styles. Um, uh, I, I play also violin and I, I have a, a string quartet, classical string quartet. I know the ten um, last day I was with them and I, I didn't practice double bass since two weeks. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I love to play a lot of different things. I love to play Irish music and violin and uh, and yes, during the quarantine, um, I tried to experiment new styles on double bass. And for instance, I um, I did the transcription of um, a piece uh, from Edgar Meyer and Christil, um, a, a piece. Uh, so the name of the piece is El Cinco Real. Real. I I am not sure, but the uh, pronunciation. Um, I do my best in English but I'm not a, a crack. So um, yeah I, I, I always try to, to you know to grow up to improve my playing with new things and I I love to to watch videos of a lot of bassists and not only classical bassists uh, but a lot of them, like Edgar Meyer, or like uh, Renaud Garcia France, or many of us, uh, we have the chance to to have really good, really big ambassador of uh, our instrument. So in many styles, and um, yeah, I'm trying to experiment with that, and um, with that, I I practice on. Um, many pieces, I have some recordings to do uh, in the summer uh, on uh, especially uh, a piece from Nicholas Walker, uh, Choral, the name is Choral, and it is a really interesting piece with um, harmonics, you know, flagellates, and uh, the beginning is like this. and I um, encourage you to discover this music because it's really fun to play and to listen. Uh, yeah, I, I work on Bottesini Concerto, I, I work on the first suite of Bach. Yes, I have many different things to play. Um, yeah. <laughs> As a bonus, uh, with Lucas, my boyfriend, uh, we'll play the piece that I talked about in the first question, um, El Cinco Real by Edgar Meyer and Christine. Thank you. 
and playing double bass and the music in general so take care bye so what did you think i really hope that you have enjoyed this video as much as i have it's been fascinating to look into the lives of these well heroes of the classical bass scene so if you have enjoyed it please click that like button leave us a comment and let us know and of course we need to say thank you thank you to these incredible musicians who've taken part and you know, shared so much with us today. And thank you for watching at home. Practice hard and we'll see you next time.